My bones rattle as the dropship shudders, plasma fire peppering the reinforced hull. Another lurch, and I grab a bulkhead support, teeth gritted to stop them from chattering. There's nowhere to hide in here. We're packed in tight, thirty soldiers in full combat armor, magnetized boots scraping the floor as we brace against the next wave of turbulence. Captain Riker grips the handholds overhead, his face a mask of grim concentration. I still can't believe they pulled him out of retirement for this mess. The man's a legend, fought in more campaigns than I've had birthdays. Yet, he's here, shoulder to shoulder with grunts like me. Incoming. Someone shouts. The world explodes. Shrapnel tears through the dropship, not plasma weapons, something far worse. The force of the blast throws me to the ground. My ears are ringing, vision swimming. It takes a moment to realize half the squad's gone. Torn to shreds. Dead. Riker's voice crackles through the chaos, amplified across the ship's calms. Survivors to the hatch. We're losing altitude. We scramble, the lucky few. Each thunderous impact sends tremors through the ship. Any second, the whole thing could fall apart. The hatch hisses open. I don't hesitate, leaping into the swirling dust and smoke with the others. The ground is far closer than it should be, but there's no time to question it. I hit hard. The planet, Xeron 5, is a mess of shattered rock and acid pools. We're on the edge of a chasm that drops into swirling, toxic clouds. I scramble back, trying to find some cover. Another tremor rocks the ground, throwing me flat. When I look up, it's like a nightmare I can't wake from. Our capital ships, the pride of the Imperial fleet, are crumbling into burning wreckage. The Mantis, those insectoid freaks, dart between them, gleaming exoskeletons flashing as they rip our fleet apart. Fall back. Form a perimeter. Riker's voice cuts through the din. But it's already too late. We were never meant to land, never meant to fight. This was a trap. A mantis lands twenty meters away. It's hideous, taller than a man, skittering legs propelling its segmented body. Its head twitches, iridescent compound eyes focusing on me. Its mandibles open. Then a beam of scorching energy lances across the battlefield. The mantis vaporizes, its chitinous body turning to ash in the blink of an eye. I follow the energy blast back to its source. Riker stands on a ridge above us, the barrel of his ancient-looking weapon still glowing red. Archaeotech someone whispers in awe. Riker's shoulders slump as exhaustion hits him. Move, soldiers. To the rendezvous, now. He points into the churning fog, toward the only thing in this blasted landscape that looks remotely hopeful, a towering, abandoned structure etched with faded glyphs. The mantis swarm converges, giving us just enough time to sprint for the safety of those strange ruins. The inside of the structure is cold, eerily quiet. My breath fogs in the stagnant air. We've sealed the heavy doors behind us, gaining a momentary respite. This place feels, old, older than anything I've ever seen on a hundred worlds. Riker, sir. Report. Sergeant Kai snaps to attention, her voice strained. Our illustrious captain looks like he aged a decade in the last hour. He runs a hand over his close-cropped white hair. Fleet's gone. Ground forces decimated. Survivors here? Less than a company, maybe. He meets each of our eyes. This wasn't just an invasion. It was an ambush. Calculated. Precise. Someone chokes out a sob. It was Corporal Harris. He lost his whole squad in the dropship. They knew, Kai says, her knuckles white around her rifle. How did they know our strategy? Our deployment schedules? Riker circles the small chamber we've hunkered down in. There's a leak. A traitor high up in command. His eyes turn sharp, for now, that's not our problem. Survival is. Lights, Sergeant Kai orders, and a couple of soldiers flick on combat lamps. They cast long, distorted shadows, turning the alien glyphs adorning the walls into sinister figures. Riker paces the length of the room, his gaze tracing the archaic symbols. This place, it's a tomb. Or a fortress. Built by someone, or something, a long damn time ago. How do you know, sir? I ask. Can't help it. The man's served in every corner of the empire, seen things that would drive a normal person mad. A ghost of a smile tugs at his lips. Kid, you see all those fancy gadgets you wear? Armor, weapons, even the comm implants in our heads? All based on tech scavenged from ruins just like this. He taps a finger against the nearest wall. This is the source code, and we're the buggy knockoff. The words send a chill down my spine. We're the pinnacle of galactic civilization, 
and even we're standing on the shoulders of something far older. I remember the first time I held a relic weapon, an Archaeotech plasma rifle. It was heavier, clunkier than standard issue, but the power thrummed through me like a living thing. The higher-ups always gave us some spiel about tapping into lost knowledge, but now, standing amidst this forgotten place, it all feels real in a way that unsettles me to the core. Sir, any idea who built this? Corporal Harris pipes up. He's young, barely old enough to shave, but there's a haunted look in his eyes that none of us can escape. Riker hesitates. Legends. The Imperium calls them the predecessors. Supposedly, their civilization spanned the stars before ours was even a spark. So, ghosts, someone mutters in the darkness. Maybe, Riker says slowly. Maybe not. But this place, it proves those legends have some truth. That's both a sliver of hope and a whole galaxy of trouble. He turns on us, his eyes blazing. Listen up. We can't control what happened in orbit, and we can't dwell on traitors. What we control is right here, right now. And the mantis bastards outside won't be happy until they pry us out of this rock and crush us into dust. A murmur rises from the group, the first spark of defiance amid the despair. Riker presses on. So, we adapt. We take what these predecessors left behind, and we forge it into a weapon the mantis can't comprehend. But how? I blurt out. We're soldiers, not archaeologists. Riker's gaze lands on me, measuring. Private, what's your name? Ellis, sir. Alex Ellis. All right, Ellis. You ever hear of a battle tactic from old Earth called guerrilla warfare? I shake my head, confused. Earth was a graveyard of a planet, lost to us millennia ago. Why would fighting tactics from a dead world matter here and now? They fought from the shadows, Riker explains, his voice taking on a lecturing tone. Smaller forces, hitting the enemy where they were weak, exploiting their overconfidence. They turned their lack of resources into an advantage. He gestures around us. And here we are, Ellie. Lacking damn near everything. But you know what these predecessors did have? They had time. Time to build, time to plan. Think of this place as their battlefield, one they designed long before the mantis were even a glint in some cosmic slime pond. A plan begins to form in my head, a crazy, desperate one. But it's the only spark of hope we've got. Sir, are you thinking traps? His grin is sharp. Traps, ambushes, the works. We'll turn their arrogance against them. Show them what happens when you underestimate something far older and more cunning than you can ever imagine. Ours morph into an eternity. We scavenge the tomb fortress, our combat lights flickering across chambers filled with cryptic machinery and faded battle plans carved into the ancient stone. Every corner hums with forgotten technology, whispering of wars fought across the stars long before humanity was even a footnote in the cosmos. The predecessors, whoever they were, didn't play nice. The deeper we go, the more deadly their contraptions become. One wrong step, and it isn't just a plasma blast that fries you, it's disintegration beams, crushing gravity wells, and traps that shift the very fabric of reality. We lose two good soldiers to the whims of these forgotten architects. But in those same chambers, there are weapons. Not the sleek archaeotech we're used to, but something raw and brutal. Energy projectors the size of tanks, stasis fields meant to ensnare armies, devices that crackle with a power that makes my skin crawl. Riker, once the stoic soldier, moves with a manic gleam in his eyes. We're not just rigging traps anymore, we're building an arsenal straight from the nightmares of a vanished civilization. Recon team, report, he barks into the comm. Corporal Harris's voice comes back, tight with tension. Sir, they're closing in. Dozens of them, coming straight for the main entrance. A wicked grin spreads across Riker's face. Perfect. Send the welcome party. He flicks a series of switches I've never seen before. From the depths of the fortress comes a low, mournful hum. Then, through a network of viewports, we see images of the ruined landscape outside. Three shimmering figures materialize in the swirling fog surrounding the entrance. They look vaguely humanoid, sheathed in shimmering, segmented armor that shifts like quicksilver. Predecessor war constructs, dormant for who knows how long, now are puppets. The mantis swarm surges towards them, their insectoid forms converging on the glowing intruders. That's when the show begins. The first predecessor construct raises a hand, and a beam of iridescent energy lances out. It doesn't just vaporize the mantis, it twists their bodies inside out, contorting them into impossible shapes before they explode in showers of acidic gore. The second construct shimmers, a sphere of crackling energy engulfing it. The mantis charge mindlessly, 
only to be thrown back like leaves in a hurricane, their exoskeletons sparking and smoking. The third construct is the most terrifying. It vanishes in a flicker of light, reappearing among the mantis hordes. Its gleaming claws rip through chitin and metal like their paper, sowing chaos in a whirlwind of teleportation strikes. I've always prided myself on my composure under fire, but watching this display of ancient power sends an icy shiver down my spine. This isn't just war, it's annihilation unleashed. Yet, there's a strategic brilliance to it. Each trap, each construct deployment, it's Riker's mind woven into the predecessor's tapestry of destruction. He's taking those old earth tactics and amplifying them with tech that shouldn't even exist. Then, as suddenly as it began, it's over. Dozens of mantis lie dead, the remnants of their force scattering into the poisonous mists. The constructs vanish, fading back into their dormant chambers. Riker stares at the viewport, his grin almost feral. That's just a taste, he growls, time for the main course. And that's when the plot twist hits me with the force of a meteor. Every tremor, every monstrous noise we'd heard from the fortress depths, it wasn't the mantis breaking through. I turn, heart pounding in my ears, and stare into a chamber we deliberately avoided. Something massive stirs within, ancient metal groaning as it awakens. We haven't just awoken guardians. We've unleashed a caged beast. The trap wasn't for the mantis. It was for us. A wave of cold dread washes over me. Every instinct screams to run, but the room is a dead end. The thing. The machine. Titan. Whatever the predecessors locked away here eclipses even the war constructs in scale. It stirs, casting monolithic shadows that flicker and warp in our dying torchlight. Riker curses, the first sign of hesitation I've seen in him since we landed on this wretched rock. That wasn't in the damn schematics. It begins to rise, fluid and terrible, like a leviathan emerging from the ocean floor. Segments of impossible metal grind against each other, sending sparks and screeching echoes through the vast chamber. Orders, sir. Sergeant Kai's voice is steady, but I sense the same bone-deep fear mirroring my own. We redirect, Riker snaps, his focus returning with a vengeance. We're not just outmatched here, we're irrelevant. Trap deployment, pattern sigma. Lure the thing straight to the mantis lines, as much firepower as it can soak up. We scramble, the grim determination fueled by a desperation that makes our hands shake. The plan's a long shot, pit one gargantuan nightmare against another, and pray we survive the fallout. This isn't just guerrilla warfare anymore, it's a game of cosmic chess where we're barely pawns. Each rerouted trap, every activated war machine, thrums with ancient power that eats away at my sanity. With each command echoed down the tomb's corridors, I know we're gambling our existence on the whims of a civilization buried by time itself. At last, it's ready. The beast in the depths rumbles, its movements shaking the foundations of the fortress. I catch glimpses of it through the maze of corridors, a segmented form, towering over the constructs, crowned by what look like cannons wreathed in crackling energy. Calms. Tell those idiots outside this ain't a rescue. Riker's voice is laced with a bitter humor that somehow feels more human than despair. He looks at us, something akin to pride in his tired eyes. We didn't just hold the line today, soldiers. We gave the Imperium a fighting chance. Now, let's go make sure one hell of a distraction. There are no cheers, no heroic speeches. Just the resolute click of weapons cycling, and the thudding of boots as we abandon the depths, fleeing the monstrous shadow at our backs. We emerge from the tomb fortress moments before it shudders, cracks spider webbing across the ancient stone. With a roar that tears the toxic sky, the beast lurches out. The mantis swarming like frenzied ants, barely register its existence before being swatted aside, their formation shattering under the onslaught. What follows isn't a battle. It's a spectacle of cosmic horror. Rays of unimaginable power sear across the landscape, the very ground melting where they strike. The Mantis Queen, a gargantuan monstrosity we thought was the pinnacle of their evolutionary nightmare, shrieks in defiance. It lasts a mere second before the beam lances through it, leaving a smoking crater where it stood. Through the haze of dust and devastation, we run. The construct titans we unleashed wreak havoc, but their mere annoyances to the behemoth born from the tomb. Every time we think we're clear, the earth rumbles, the horizon flashes with blinding light, and we're forced to dive for cover again. But then, cutting through the chaos, comes the signal, three sharp blasts over the calms. The Imperial fleet, or what's left of it, has rallied. New directive. Sergeant Kai shouts, pointing towards a jagged ridge scorched black by weapons fire. Extraction point is at Mark 5. Move. We sprint, the taste of ash in our mouths, 
pushing our battered bodies to their limits. The explosions grow distant, outpaced at last. And on the ridge, I see them, the gleaming shapes of dropships, their hatches flung open in welcome. It might not be a victory. Far from it. The Imperium is in shambles, Xeron 5 a smoking testament to the Mantis's ferocity. But as I stumble into that dropship, my comrades bloodied and exhausted yet defiantly alive, I know this. We struck back. We bought time with blood and ancient sorcery. And sometimes, in a galaxy of horrors, surviving to fight another day is a victory in itself. The dropship jolts and swerves. But it's not the Mantis this time, it's the relief of escape. We slump against the walls, the adrenaline crash hitting us all at once. Somewhere up ahead, our battered fleet is regrouping, licking its wounds and preparing for a war that's just entered a horrifying new stage. Back on the capital ship, the medbay is a war zone of its own. I end up on a cot next to Corporal Harris, his eyes distant as they patch up the shrapnel wound in his shoulder. The techs are running ragged, but at least we didn't bring back any of those predecessor. Surprises. Whatever that thing was, it wiped the mantis off the map in its rampage. Maybe it'll vanish back into its tomb now that the buffet's closed. A grim-faced officer enters, a pristine uniform that screams high command. Lieutenant Commander Thorne, if the whispers I hear are right. He scans the room, then stops short in front of my cot. Private Ellis. Sergeant Kai tells me you were instrumental down there. His voice is crisp, clipped, hiding a tension that mirrors my own. Just following orders, sir, I mumble. I mean it. I'm alive because Riker was brilliant enough to turn a tomb into a weapon, not because of anything I did. Thorne leans closer. Captain Riker is a legend. But legends can't interpret artifacts. Can't rewire predecessor tech on the fly. A flicker of something I can't name passes through his eyes. Interest? Calculation? We. May do, sir, is all I manage. He holds my gaze for another strained beat, then nods. You'll need to debrief. Full report on predecessor structures, weaponry, any operational schematics your team salvaged. We're establishing a forward base on the planet, and every scrap of knowledge is vital now. Every scrap of knowledge. A jolt of fear slices through me. They want more than tactical lessons. They want inside those ruins, into the heart of what we unleashed down there. They're already planning to pick the carcass of the predecessor civilization clean, just like they've done on a hundred lesser worlds. Sir, with respect. Harris pipes up from his cot. Thorne fixes him with a glare, cutting him off. Rest, Corporal. This conversation doesn't concern you, he says, the dismissal stinging despite the polite veneer. My stomach churns. Riker chose us, the grunts, the expendables, for a reason. High command's greed for those ancient relics is legendary. Do they care who they send back into that tomb? Private Ellis. Thorne's eyes bore into mine. His voice lowers, conspiratorial. What you saw down there. It transcends standard warfare. The Imperium will need soldiers with your adaptability. You understand? The offer hangs heavy between us. Promotions, a chance to escape the trenches, to be part of something bigger. And the price is stepping back into that place of cold stone and whispering machines. The image of Riker flashes in my mind. Not the brilliant tactician, but the man standing on the ridge above us, etched against the glow of his scavenged weaponry that gleam of desperate hunger in his eyes. We all felt it, a taste of power far beyond our understanding, dangerous and seductive. Sir, my voice comes out rougher than I intended. With all due respect, if you want to understand the predecessors, send an archaeology team. Send a hundred of them. Thorn's brow furrows, the pristine mask of command slipping. If only it were that simple, son. But we're at war. There's no time for scholarship, just survival. I meet his stare. I fought down there because I had to. But those ruins. I swallow hard, there's, there's stuff older than the Imperium sleeping in those walls. And you shouldn't wake it up just to win a battle. The medbay falls silent, every eye on us. Harris gives a subtle nod of support. Thorn straightens, the flash of frustration in his eyes turning icy. Dismissed, private. It's not a request. It's a sentence. As he strides out, I know it, I'm done for. I talked back to an officer, questioned the Imperium's holy quest for ancient trinkets. I might survive Xeron 5, but my career? Buried as surely as the predecessors themselves. Sleep wouldn't come. The rhythmic hum of the medbay, the hiss of recycled air, it all felt amplified, each sound a drumbeat echoing the chaos of Xeron 5. Guilt gnawed at me. 
disobeying orders was a surefire way to end up in the brig, and with the war in full swing, who knew what kind of punishment they'd dole out for a simple grunt. But the alternative, returning to that tomb, stirring whatever ancient slumber lay within, sent shivers down my spine. Maybe Thorn wouldn't force me back in, but with a war on, there weren't many options for a soldier who defied his superiors. A creak of the medbay door startled me. Sergeant Kai limped in, her face etched with worry. You all right, kid? Just thinking, I mumbled, trying to avoid her gaze. Her eyes narrowed. Thinking what? I hesitated. Could I trust her? They want us back in there, sergeant. She didn't react with surprise. Just a grim nod. Thought they might. High command's got a thirst for anything predecessor. Like vultures picking at a carcass. Relief flooded me. At least I wasn't alone. So, what do we do? She sat beside me, her voice low. We bought some time, Alice. But not much. The brass, they're blinded by power. They see an advantage, and damn the consequences. A plan began to form in my mind, risky, bordering on insane, but it was the only shot we had. Sergeant, what do you know about archaeology teams? Kai raised an eyebrow. Not much. Bunch of eggheads obsessed with dusty relics. Exactly. Do you think? Do you think they'd take us? She stared at me, the gears turning in her mind. Then, a slow smile spread across her face. We wouldn't be soldiers then, would we? We'd be. Researchers. The idea was outrageous. Fake my way into a research team, use their expertise to learn more about the predecessors, maybe even find a way to shut down that damned machine before it turned its destructive gaze on the rest of the galaxy. It was a desperate gamble, but it was a gamble I was willing to take. All right, I said, her voice firm. We talked to Riker. He knows this whole mess better than anyone. See what kind of trouble we can stir up. A flicker of hope sparked within me. Maybe, just maybe, we could turn this disaster into a chance to understand, not exploit, the legacy of the predecessors. And maybe, just maybe, in the process, save ourselves and the galaxy from a power far older and more terrifying than the Mantis Swarm. As the hum of the medbay lulled me to a restless sleep, I knew one thing for sure, survival had just become a whole lot more complicated. The debrief was excruciating. Housed in a cramped command tent pitched precariously on the still smoldering rock of Xeron 5, Lieutenant Commander Thorne and a team of stony-faced analysts grilled us for hours. Harris and I stuck to our story, ruins stumbled upon, standard guerrilla tactics adapted with scavenged predecessor energy cells, the basics. Every mention of the monolithic war machines we'd awakened was met with narrowed eyes and scribbled notes. The less they knew about what lay deeper in the tomb, the better. Riker, his legendary stoicism replaced with a crackling intensity, backed our play. I watched the veteran captain carefully. Every twitch of his scarred hands, every calculated pause in his testimony, felt like a piece of a coded message I was only beginning to decipher. He wasn't just protecting us, he was protecting something far more profound than a successful ambush. When it was finally over, relief washed over me, tinged with a new anxiety. Thorn's parting words hung in the dusty air, you've done your duty. Rest and be prepared for redeployment within the week. That didn't sound like a demotional punishment, but then again, High Command rarely played its cards straight. That night, I slipped out from the makeshift barracks just as the acidic clouds parted, revealing the shattered moons of Xeron 5. Movement caught my eye and Sergeant Kai emerged from the shadows near the perimeter. What now? I asked, the chill wind biting at my exposed skin. Now, she said, handing me a salvaged predecessor datapad, its smooth surface humming with latent energy, we learn. The next few days became a blur. Our rest consisted of backbreaking labor hauling crates and equipment for the newly arrived forward base. Every spare moment vanished into the shadowy ruin the soldiers were already calling the vault. Kai, Harris, myself, and a handful of Rikers veterans had subtly maneuvered ourselves onto the excavation team begrudgingly assembled by high command. Three civilian archaeologists led the dig, and it was immediately clear the friction was mutual. Dr. Mirella Ortiz, a hardened woman with piercing gray eyes and faded tattoos swirling up her neck, barely hid her disdain for the military presence. Soldiers and scholarship make for poor bedfellows, she'd muttered as we inventory chipped tablets and half-melted control panels. You understand the value of patience, of context, I hope? Her words stung. Kai and I exchanged a strained look. Patience wasn't a luxury we had, not when Thorne and his ilk were undoubtedly plotting how to turn the vault into a weapons factory. Riker pulled me aside one evening when the unnatural glow of the moons painted the landscape in an eerie silver. 
Ellis, his voice was a low rasp. You were right about those archaeologists. Stubborn as hell, but they understand things we don't. He gestured towards the vault entrance, where Dr. Ortiz argued vehemently with a young officer. They don't just see weapons, they see a culture buried here. And cultures, kid, they have a way of fighting back, even when they're long dead. My blood ran cold. You mean traps? More of those monstrosities? Riker shook his head. Not just that. Echoes. Patterns of thought. The predecessors were masters of manipulation, not just machines, but minds. This place is saturated with their way of thinking. Spend enough time here, it'll seep into your own. He met my gaze, the fire in his eyes tempered with a somber warning. Learn all you can from Ortiz and her team. But remember, Ellie, you're walking a tightrope. One wrong step, and you'll tumble headfirst into a past that may be better left buried. His words echoed in my skull as I drifted off to a ragged sleep, haunted by half-glimpsed glyphs that danced on the edge of comprehension, the sensation of ancient eyes burning into my soul. Dr. Ortiz, I discovered, was a hurricane in human form. She swept through the vault, deciphering faded schematics, arguing with Thorn over extraction protocols, and muttering curses in what I learned was a smattering of a dozen extinct languages. The datapad Kai had scavenged became our lifeline, a shaky translation matrix against predecessor script. Bit by bit, the picture that emerged was far removed from High Command's visions of limitless firepower. The predecessors, whoever they were, weren't just conquerors. They were survivors, masters of adaptation against an environment so hostile it made the mantis look like harmless pests. Images of Titanic, dome cities materialized on the datapad screen, images that were mirrored by the half-collapsed structure we stood within. Outposts, Ortiz murmured, tracing the lines of a faded star chart. This wasn't a war room, private. It was a crisis bunker. Something deep below stirred uneasily within me. So they lost, I blurted out. She turned, a flash of surprise in her eyes. Not lost, perhaps. Changed. Or retreated. But something was out there, something that made a civilization capable of this simply. She gestured around the chamber, pack up and disappear. The implications were chilling. If the mantis, relentless and terrifying, were a mere footnote in galactic history, what could have possibly driven these predecessors into the shadows? And had they left something behind, some warning echoing through the millennia? Days turned into a grueling routine. Digging through rubble by the harsh light of the moons, deciphering alien schematics in the flickering glow of the datapad, and always, the sense of something vast and hungry waiting just beyond the edge of our perception. Thorn materialized like a specter, his presence sending a ripple of unease through the excavation crews. There's nothing here, he would growl, his eyes glinting with an avaricious hunger that had little to do with archaeological curiosity. Just dead tech. Yet, even the most cynical of soldiers couldn't ignore the change that was taking hold of the camp. Accidents increased. Petty squabbles turned into violent brawls. Ortiz found one of her assistants sobbing uncontrollably, overwhelmed by an inexplicable sense of dread. It's the resonance, she explained one evening, the tension lines around her eyes deepening. This place, it wasn't built just for survival. It was built to project something, a kind of psychic imprint. So, a mind control weapon? Harris asked, but his usual bravado sounded hollow. Perhaps, Ortiz murmured. Or a call for help. Or maybe a last defiant scream before the darkness took them. The vault was changing us. I caught glimpses of myself in the reflective shards of predecessor machinery, and saw someone darker, haunted by the weight of forgotten battles. Our dreams became a shared nightmare, flashes of insectal horrors from the battlefield clashing with images of colossal, faceless figures looming over dying worlds. One night, I woke with a jolt, my heart pounding. In the eerie moonlight, I could have sworn I saw fleeting shadows shifting along the far wall of the tent. Not human, but a segmented, twitching movement that melted back into the darkness as my eyes adjusted. The next morning, Sergeant Kai was gone. Her bunk empty, her gear vanished. Panic rose within me. I searched the camp discreetly, but it was as if she'd never existed. Even my inquiries were met with blank stares. Had she cracked under the strain, wandered into the toxic wasteland? Or had Thorne's patience finally frayed, and he'd eliminated a soldier who understood too much? Fury and desperation coiled within me. Confronting Thorne would be risky, but I couldn't stay silent. Dr. Ortiz was the only one left who might listen, might believe. And that's when it happened. Deep within the heart of the vault, one of the energy conduits that crisscrossed the chamber pulsed with an intensity that set my teeth on edge. 
The datapad in my hands hummed in response, its screen flickering. Then came the whispers. Not in any language I understood, but like the susurrus of countless insects, slithering into my brain, a relentless buzzing that pounded against my sanity. Ortiz stood beside me, her eyes wide with horror. It's awakening, she breathed. Something's reaching out. And as I stared, transfixed, into the pulsating heart of the conduit, I realized we had been fools. This wasn't an abandoned fortress. It wasn't a relic of the past. It was a beacon. The whispers amplified into a discordant chorus, promising power, knowledge, salvation. Then, through the haze of alien thoughts, a single image crystallized, a segmented, chitinous claw, tipped with a shimmering energy that mirrored the heart of the conduit. The mantis. They were coming. Not as an invading force this time, but as willing supplicants drawn by a siren song echoing across the stars. And we, in our arrogance and desperation, had activated the signal. 